Our scripture reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and began to teach. They were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, What business do we have with each other, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him, throwing him into convulsions. The unclean spirit cried out with a loud voice and came out of him. They were all amazed, so that they debated amongst themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Immediately the news about him spread everywhere and to all the surrounding district of Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Now, I know I've said this before uh, when things seem to be going awry a bit. Um, so I, but I truly do believe this. When things, especially on Sunday, when they seem to be going wrong, to me, that means that somebody, either here or whoever may be listening, really needs to hear the things that are being said today. And that means that something is trying to stop those things from being said. But we will continue to forge ahead so that it gets, what needs to be said gets said today. So in our scripture lesson for today, we find Jesus speaking in the synagogue. And as he speaks in this synagogue, he is teaching of his own authority. Now, to us, this doesn't seem like such a huge deal. But to the people of that synagogue, they would have had a very different reaction because this was something that was very different from the way that they were used to meeting and hearing in the synagogue. You see, the synagogue was used for three things. For prayer, for the reading of the word, and for the teaching of the word. There was no sacrifice for atonement. There was no music, no high priests that were in charge. Those things were reserved for the temple. And I think if we were to draw a parallel for ourselves to what the synagogue would be like, most like for us today, it would probably most resemble Sunday school. See, there was a leader of the synagogue and they would choose who would read that day and who would be allowed to speak on that reading. And this is an ever rotating position, who would be speaking, and people would be able to just walk into the synagogue and with the blessing of that person, they would be able to read and teach that day. So this is how Jesus is able to just walk into the synagogue and begin teaching. Now, the thing that also strikes the people differently in the scripture is that when Jesus is teaching, he teaches using himself as the authority. And the reason that this is so odd is that the scribes, the other ones who would teach in the synagogue, would have never relied on themselves as the authority. They would have pointed back to the law, and that's how they would have made their points to people. The law says this, and let's talk about what the law says. So think of it this way. I do not preach based on my own authority. I do not stand up here each week, I hope, that it's not coming across this way, and say, well, according to Eric, you should be doing this. What I try to do is to rely on scripture to be my basis for what I preach upon. And I hope that makes things a bit more clear as to what the synagogue would be like. So now, not only are they shocked that Jesus is teaching in this way, he goes even further and he cleanses a man of an unclean spirit, performing the miracle right in front of everyone that he is teaching. And what is most interesting here to me is that the unclean spirit recognizes Jesus. He knows that Jesus is the Holy One, and that unclean spirit knows that he is in a lot of trouble. And he challenges Jesus, what business do we have with each other? Are you here to destroy us? Perhaps he's following up on a time that Jesus had spent in the wilderness. Are you here to destroy us, Jesus? Or are you here to join us, Jesus? Well, Jesus was there to destroy him. 
And he does so simply by using his words, be quiet and come out. And here we see a glimpse of the awesome power of Jesus, removing that unclean spirit simply by speaking. Well, how does this apply to us today? How can we follow this example of Jesus? Well, I want you to know that your words matter. The things that you say are important. And the way that you say them, the people that you say them to, and the authority with which you speak, these are all things that can have a profound effect on the people that you know. Now, I know that we've all heard the old adage since we were little kids, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And I'm here to tell you, if you haven't figured that out yet, that that saying is simply not true. But the opposite is true. Kind words can really have a profound effect on the lives of others, especially when they're spoken from a place of authority. And I want to tell you a story about hearing some unkind words and how they mattered to me. So if I were to guess how many soccer games I've played in in my lifetime, I would say the number is easily over 1,000. Uh, my dad can probably uh, tell you that he's set through probably at least 1,000 games <laughs> in his lifetime. Um, but I've played soccer since I was four years old, and up until the recent pandemic, I was still playing. And when it's all over, if my knees hold out, I might still play again. <laughs> now, despite all of those games, there are special moments that stand out, and anyone that's ever played sports can tell you, you remember the good moments in your career of playing, and you remember the bad moments. The good wins and the tough losses are things that stick with you forever. However, out of all those games that I've played, there was one that was unlike any other. When I was finishing up college, I had the opportunity to be an assistant coach for the Shikalimi boys soccer team. And through that connection, I ended up with a unique chance to play a game inside one of the prisons at Frackville against a team of prisoners. And we began to play the game and it was a spirited game, but it was a fair game. And things were going great. And to me, honestly, it just seemed like it was gonna be another game with kind of a nice story to be able to tell people. But then, at halftime, up until this point, it was just us and that, the team of prisoners. But at halftime, they let the other prisoners out for their yard time. And the other prisoners came over to watch the game. I'd imagine for them it was a break in the monotony of the everyday routine that they had, seeing different people in here playing against their fellow inmates for a game. And they didn't just watch the game from afar. They decided to stand shoulder to shoulder with each other and form a perimeter around the field as we were playing. And now I may have just been young at the time and, and dumb, but I didn't really feel worried while we were playing. So as we were playing, I put a move on a guy, was going past him, and then I was immediately fouled. And I heard one of the convicts from the sideline yell out, you're going to have to do better than that, fat boy. And from then on, every time I touched the ball, I was getting verbally abused by a couple of the prisoners. Now, again, this didn't really bother me at all. In fact, the more they yelled at me, the more I felt like, I oh, must be having a pretty good game if they're bothering to yell at me like this. You see, I grew up in a locker room setting, playing different sports. I played basketball in the local parks in Lewistown against some pretty interesting characters. <laughs> and I played soccer and tennis in different states against a lot of different nationalities of people. And the time period that I grew up in, having someone talk trash to you while you were playing was simply part of the game. And I have been cussed out in several different languages. <laughs> so hearing someone call me fat boy from the sidelines, it didn't really hurt my feelings too much. And I had been kind of talking back and forth nicely with one of the prisoners during the game. And I said, boy, fat boy, is that the best they got? Man, I've been called way worse than that. And he responded to me, yeah, I bet you have. Uh, but those guys that are yelling at you, uh, they're in here for murder. So if I were you, I wouldn't respond back to them. 
Now I was a little worried. <laughs> you see, the words didn't matter to me, just a little bit, but then understanding what they were capable of and the authority that those men had in that situation, that made me change my thoughts on what was going on. It changed the perspective for me. And so, as I said, your words do matter. And the authority of those words matter as well. We have to remind ourselves that though we do not have the same authority that Jesus did, though we are not able to cast out unclean spirits as he did, we do have the ability to cast out bad things with our words. So what do I mean by this? We have the ability to help others with our words of support. And we have the ability to help them drive out their evil spirits, things like drug addiction, with our words of kindness. And we can do this by willing to be able to support people as they're going through their difficult times. Now, I'm not saying that our words are the cure-all for all the bad things in this world. However, I think if we work towards helping build people up, especially during the difficult times that they find themselves in, we can help to make a difference in their lives. Now, just like with Jesus, and just like with those prisoners, once I found out that I really should be afraid of them, having authority when speaking with someone can make a huge difference. So what I mean is this. If you take the time to get to know people, to build relationships with them, your kind words can be even more effective when they're going through their tough times. If you build up your rapport with others and you build friendships, people will be more willing to listen to you. Think about it. Does it feel better to hear kind words from a stranger or from someone that you know cares about you? Are you willing to hear that things might need to change in your life from someone you don't know or from someone that knows you well? Now, we also have a great way to help people with our words besides just being kind to them. You see, we have the ability with our words to teach them about Jesus. We have the ability to show them the words that Jesus himself spoke. And we have the ability to teach them about the authority that Jesus has over all our lives. How if they're willing to accept his authority, their lives can be transformed just like the man in the synagogue. Jesus said, you know, my, to follow me and my burden is light. My burden is easy and my yoke is light. That's what I was going for. And we can take those words to others. You see, the gospel of Jesus Christ has been driving out evil and helping people with their lives for over 2,000 years. And we can be the ones that make sure it continues to do so for the next generation. So I want you to think about the words that you're using with every single person that you meet. Because your words truly do have power. My challenges for you this week are, what is one person in your life, or who is one person in your life, that you know can use a kind word from you? And I think we can all come up with at least one person that we know right now that's having a hard time. And my ch other challenge is that you call them up this week and you share those kind words with them. You never know how far this can go to helping them drive out that evil spirit or that problem that they're facing. Amen.